Fusion, and welcome back to another episode of the Codec. Joined today by the ever returning corrupt Ronan, Alex. Welcome, sir. <laughs> you know, it's good to be back. It's been quite a few years since we've done this, and I'm glad that our uh, our returning show is with some amazing guests. So thanks for having me back. Ex- no problem. Happy to have you. Uh, as he just mentioned, we do have some amazing guests today. We have uh, Jennifer Taylor. Thank you for coming, ma'am. No, oh, thanks. You called me by my full name, Jennifer. I, wow. I know. <laughs> Mom, I feel like I'm in trouble. I like that. <laughs> well, w- welcome to the show, man. We're happy you uh, were able to make some time and, and come sit down and speak to uh, us as well as your co-star in Halo, Steve Downs. Welcome, sir. Uh, well, thank you. Hi, Daly and Alex. Nice to uh, be with you again. For no sure, problem. we're happy happy to have you back. Um, you, uh, as we mentioned off offline, you've been on the show a couple of times. You're a veteran here, and uh, today will be no different. Except uh, we have, as Ronan said, the amazingly talented Jen Taylor with us to kind of talk a little bit about voice acting, uh, a lot of bit about Halo and how it's evolved, and specifically y'all two's relationship uh, within the game and out of the game, which seems to be amazing. So, with that said. Um, thank you again so much for joining us. I'm going to turn it over to Alex for our, our first question. So back when, you know, Halo first release, obviously video, voice work in video games was still trying to come into its own, so to speak. Um, and you guys have kind of been with it from the early days with, you know, with the original Halo all the way up until now. So I guess my first question, this, and this is for both of you, but we'll start with Jen in this case. Um, how have the changes, I guess, in voice work influenced the way you approach your roles now from back how you used to approach them, I guess, from the first Halo. Hmm. The changes in voiceover and games in, in generally, mm-hmm. how has that affected it? Yeah. I don't know that it has for me. I mean, because that's, you know, that's not going to um, affect the way that I do my work, except mm-hmm. I, I like to think that I'm learning and growing and becoming a better actor. Um, but I try to go in, you know, from a personal you know, playing any uh, people have asked me, what's it like to play a computer? I'm like, she's, I can't play her as a computer. Right. I mean, she's, I have to play her as a, as a character, as a person. So, um, technically things have changed for me because I'm no longer just in the booth. Sometimes I am in the booth, but oftentimes I'm doing performance capture, but, um, I don't know that the way I approach any approach a character has, has changed. Mm -hmm other again other than hopefully i've become a better more nuanced actor in 20 years <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness yeah, it's been a while absolutely uh i i would have to echo that really uh, uh almost exactly i don't know that that the changes that have occurred in the industry yeah, or the way games are approached hmm. has has changed me i just hope i'm doing it better yeah uh i i i think it, you know it's so unusual as a to 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 be involved with a a character and a story in in our business for 20 years mm. and um so the hope is that 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 sort of depth starts to come through in in some of the work that i do mm. i i think that would be my hope but uh and and you know there have been some technical changes uh, yeah. over the years oh, yeah. but you know at the end of the day you're still talking into a microphone yeah. uh, with, with nobody there. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that part hasn't changed. And the make-believe aspect of it uh, is, is exactly the way it is now, the way it was then. It, mm-hmm. it, you know, you, you, you got to you know, make up a story in your head and, and make up visuals in your head in order to, uh, you know, to, to, to you know, be believable. Yeah, right. Chief? Chief, can you hear me? At last. Are you all right? Can you move? My first question for you guys is um, you both have done um, a a lot of stuff, but you've been with Halo for a long time, Um, you know, two early 2000s when it uh, first came out. So since the start, um, can you guys tell us uh, 
like a point in time where you kind of realize that Halo is going to be something bigger than just like another video game, you know, back then? Mm -hmm. uh, at what point was it uh, like during sometime during production of a certain numbered Halo? Or was it, uh, you know, the, the news when Halo 2 came out, how it had all the bustling and rustling? Uh, Jen, we'll start with you if you could kind of tell me when you kind of realized that Halo was kind of a, a bigger deal than your average game. So, um, I, Steve, and I know Steve will echo this again, in that <laughs> I didn't know that Halo was a success, frankly, until they called me and said, hey, can you do Halo 2? And I was like, oh, I guess people liked Halo. That's nice. Because I'm just clearly out of the loop. Um, or was at the time. I, I still. But, uh, and, and I went to some sort of fan fest for Halo two i think but i it really wasn't until right before halo 3 came out i was sent it was called they did this thing called the cortana chronicles and they sent me around the world to meet the it was supposed to be meet the biggest fans of halo and i was i um traveled i went to sweden wow. i went to ireland i met the lead singer of um Oh gosh, what's the name of that band? It just flew right out of my head. It'll come to me. Um, I, I met all of these uh, bare naked ladies. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Um, I flew. I, I went all over the all over the world to interview these people, and I, that was when I thought, "Oh, this is this is way bigger than than I <laughs> thought it was." I mean, I know people right. like the game, and that's awesome, but I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Right okay. around Halo 3 is, is when you kind of figured um, that out? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I had met some fans, as I said, before that, who were so excited about the game. So I knew, oh, people like that, you know, this is going over well. But um, yeah, I would say that was when. That was a little shocking for me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what about you, Steve? When when did it kind of uh, dawn on you? I know we kind of maybe okay. talked a little bit about this in a, in a previous interview, uh, um, but what really was the kind of standout moment for you where you're like, oh, okay, this is, you know, bigger than, you know, uh, any role that I've had before? Well, uh, I had to find out on my own because they didn't send me anywhere. Mm. Just <laughs> FYI. Oh, <okay>. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was uh, it was uh, sometime after Halo Two, and uh, I was um, uh, this before I was uh, married a girl that I was uh, dating at the time. We went down to Florida. I was living in Chicago at the time, and we went down to see her uh, brother who lived in uh, Palm Beach somewhere. And um, uh, I, I remember walking through the room one morning, and they, and his kids were playing the game. And I had completely forgotten about all of it, you know, I, I, which is not unusual, certainly for me, but I don't think it's unusual when you do a job, a voice job, you, you know, once the job is over, you don't really, think about it, you know, yeah. unless, unless you're getting residuals. Mm -hmm. And if you're getting right. residuals, you're reminded every once in a while by a nice little envelope that comes <laughs> in the mail. But uh, that's not the case with video games. And it was not the case, uh, you know, with with uh, Halo, certainly. But the mm -hmm. kids were playing the game and a, and a jar of uh, memory. And I said, oh, um, I think I voiced a character in that video game. A character. And, <laughs> and the kids and the kids were, you know, stopped and they go, who? And I said, you know, I don't remember his name, but I, I, I think he was kind of the main guy in the game. Mm. And they said, <laughs> Master Chief. And I said, yeah, yeah, it was Master Chief. Well, within 20, 30 minutes, there's every kid in the neighborhood is at this guy's door <laughs> with an Xbox or a copy of the game or something oh, wanting man. to get it signed. And that was literally, I mean, that was the aha moment for me because I had no idea. I mean, obviously I didn't even remember the game. I didn't even remember doing it. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, th so that was the game changer, if you will. Uh, How many lines do you think you had in that first Halo? You said a lot of, Hey, Cortana. Well, well, be <laughs> where? Be besides court, be besides saying Cortana, besides that, not many. <laughs> yeah, there was there was surprisingly little dialogue from from Chief in that game, and yeah. I think um, a lot of that was because they were doing uh, books at the time, and I think that's kind of where the Chief kind of talks a little more. Mm. I think they were going for something different in the first game, and then they realized, you know 
how iconic your your voice could be with this character. That, yeah. I think that's uh, kind of where it, it exploded. I, I, I played that game as a teenager. Now here I am talking Same. to you as, <laughs> as, as, as an adult. And I, I remember busting open the original Xbox on, on Christmas with my brother and loading that game in and hearing you two. And there was just something different about it and it's not we like i said ronan and our, alex and i've been doing this a long time yeah we, we know that a lot of times it's good writing that's how it gets in oh, but in this definitely. case in this case i got to give you guys the credit because there like you said there wasn't a whole lot of lines from you hmm. cortana had uh most of the lines you know of uh exposition and dialogue and right um there was just something about the way you delivered the lines that you have that i was just like okay that this is a, a an incredible character and, yeah. and a cool cool role model at that time. I was like, I want to be I want to be like the Master Chief. I don't want to say much, <laughs> and I want and I want to get stuff done. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I want to get stuff done. Yeah, uh, you know the thing is, I have to you know really credit Marty O'Donnell uh, for, yeah. for that because yeah. he really walked me through the character. I mean, you got to remember when we when we did Halo One, they didn't even have a visual of the Chief. Mm. Yeah, I, I was trying have... to remember if I had seen Cortana before I voiced her. They yeah. changed her a bunch of yeah, times. They did. Even if even if you did, I'm sure it was a different different version. Yeah. yeah. I think originally you were supposed to be British. Uh, oh, she was. She... <laughs> well, I'll tell you about that later. Don't sure. Ask. Yeah. Sorry More on that later. But uh, yeah, I mean, so you know, Marty, uh, you know, in my case, uh, really uh, painted me a really good picture as and and gave you know and, and gave me you know something that I could sort of you know you know sink my teeth into hmm. for as little dialogue as he had uh, and and I, I give him all the credit for that and Joe state too as well. yeah 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 I think Marty and Joe really directed the yeah. hell out of those out of the <laughs> they directed the hell out of those games. <laughs> they did they directed the hell out of those games yeah, yeah, yeah. they really did you look nice Thank you. Hello, you want to get your next yeah, question? Yeah, I actually wanted to ask Steve. Like, you, you, you mentioned the whole thing about radio and stuff like that. What station were you doing that from again, if you can recall? <laughs> uh, I was, well, what the, the first station I was at in Chicago, where you are, mm -hmm. is was the Loop. And then um, and then I went to the Drive and was the, the morning show guy for the Drive for the first uh 14 years of their existence oh, wow. up until 2015. So oh, wow. yeah, that was my Chicago radio experience. Before that, I was in Los Angeles and Pittsburgh. What's your, and, what's your radio voice, Steve? Is it different? Like, what does it sound? <laughs> yeah. Give us a radio voice. You know, because I, I had a radio voice when I. Was I forgot, Jen. Oh, we've got it. I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> had it, lost it. <laughs> oh no, I don't believe yeah. it. No, well, no. Okay, all right. Here we go. 97.1 FM, The Drive. Yeah. I, there I you have, go. I have heard that voice on the radio way back <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going, yeah. I'm going to get in my car right now. <laughs> Just start yeah. driving. Just drive. Right? Just start Just driving. driving. Sir, you sir, yes, sir. <laughs> you got it. But uh, yeah, to follow up on my question, I guess. Um, so with both of you, this, this is for both of you once again. With both of you guys being in the series for as long as you have, obviously, and with most voice actors, obviously, you're going to get a little bit of an attachment to those characters that you've been with for so long. So I guess my question for both of you, and we'll, I'll start with Steve this time to mix it up a little bit. What exactly does the Halo series mean to you after all this time? Well, it certainly, um, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and not just because of what it's, you know, sort of the fame and fortune aspect of it, which has all been great. Um, uh, oh, huh? what? <laughs> Sorry, huh? Is what I said. <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 I'll tell you, you know, Jen and I both had the opportunity to meet a lot of Halo fans over yeah. the years at yep. conventions and stuff like that. And I just came back from one uh, this past weekend, and uh, it, it's it's so uh, moving to talk to people for whom the game means so much. Mm -hmm. And, um, and and as I told them w w when I was there, it enriches uh, my ability to be able to to voice the character and to be able to put you know whatever it is that I put into it. Because um, over the years, 
those people who who have told you how much the game means to them and the characters mean to them you know that sticks in your head and and i really believe it influences you know the way i approach him so um you know i i've grown rather fond of the guy let's, yeah. let's put it that way <laughs> i'm a big fan yeah i'm a big fan of master yeah Chief. when people say to you this game saved my life yeah mm. yeah this yeah. game i mean yeah. it, it truly like i was seriously depressed and this game saved my life this yeah. game gave me a community I met my husband through this yeah, game. Yeah. Right. I was, yep. we had one guy, I remember Steve and I were speechless. This man came up to us and said, I had severe PTSD when I came back from Afghanistan. Oh, and wow. this game helped me get, it helped me form a community. It helped me get back into, which I thought was really fascinating. And it helped me sort of find my way back to my family. Because oh, wow. I think he was playing with his kids. Yeah, it was, Steve and I really had, I think we just hugged him. I don't think we really knew what to say yeah, yeah. to that. But that right. or, that is something that has really, uh, I know, affected both of us. Yeah. Um, and the other and I, beauty of, of doing a character over this period of time hmm. is, uh, is the generational aspect of it. Hmm. Uh, right. Because now, you know, we hear all the time about, you know, the, uh, this this is how my dad and I bonded, or my mom yeah, and I had right. a connection, yeah. or you know that that kind of thing. And and the other really wonderful thing uh, that I've noticed over the past several years is how many more women uh, uh, enjoy the game. I mean, it used to be you know back in you know it was all dudes. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was all <laughs> dudes. It was true. All dudes all the time. Yeah, and it's not that way anymore. And I, th that's been, you know, I, I think a really exciting part of, and, and, and a testament to the makers of, of, of Halo that, that it's, it's been able to, you know, it's sort of cross generational and, and cross gender, yeah. you know, right. kind of thing, which, which has been really great. Yeah. Like for me, uh, it kind of brought a, a really close, close friendship together back when I was a, a teenager in high school, mm -hmm. for example, where. A lot of my friends would get together, we'd throw land parties and play against each other that way. And a lot of those friends, like, that was back when I was like 15, 16. Now I am in my 30s. And a lot of those friends I'm still friends with to this day. We bonded awesome. specifically over Halo just because right. of that. So I guess it kind of speaks a lot to the power, not even just for Halo stuff, but the power of video games to be able to bring people together in that sense. Yeah. 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 For sure. In a, in a unique way, I think. Well, yeah. yeah, it's storytelling, but you get to play the main character. I mean, yeah. what, I mean, that's remarkable. Yeah, right? absolutely. No matter who you are, as you say, Steve, if you're young or old or what your gender identity is or how you see yourself, you get to be a badass warrior. I mean, <laughs> right. and how amazing is that? And you're trying to save people and save the planet, yeah. right? So the the universe, right? I yeah. mean, yeah. <laughs> it's empowering. I think it's empowering. It definitely, definitely is. And it, it goes through so many different avenues, like you mentioned, you know, friendships and yeah. relationships and bonding. For, for me, it gave me an outlet to write. I actually wrote a fan cool. uh, made Halo audio book. Nice. Um, I, hired voice actors to come in and um voice original characters set in a, like a halo themed universe and uh, I, I i hadn't i've always wanted to do something like that but i never felt like i could and and just you know getting to play the games and listen to to you guys and, and draw inspiration from the stuff that you guys have brought to life really you know um has done something you know different for me i uh, I always say, um, you know, it's a such a close tie for my top like favorite franchises between uh, Metal Gear, which is where how we kind of started this uh, voice acting show, and Halo. And, and Halo just always hits with me on a more um, emotional level because you have that fun and that action, but then you also have a, a great relationship with the characters that you two yeah. play with with Cortana and in uh, in the Master Chief. Yeah, it does Absolutely. at times. I mean, emotionally intimate, right? Yeah. Right. We're we're gonna get to that because Steve told us <laughs> an interesting little story last oh. time he was here. Oh, <laughs> so um, <laughs> Ron, did you have anything else with that question? Uh, yeah, I mean, did Jenny, do you have anything else you wanted to add to that before we move on? Or I, I don't think so. Okay. I, I, you know, I'm not gonna. The thing is, is I'm we're, Steve and I aren't gonna. We're gonna talk over each other. We're yeah. not gonna let one person. <laughs> which is we're which not, is fine. Yeah, that's that fine. Order. That's fine. It's no big deal. <laughs> It's 
So uh, over time, we've seen Halo get as big as it has. It, it grew from just a uh, small time little project that was like a real time strategy game into this first person shooter series. But now it has books and movies uh -huh. and TV shows uh, in the mix. Um, and each Halo entry has been um, a little bit different. Some more focused on the combat and the action, like the gaming side, and some um, that have gone more emotional and deep. And that's kind of where I want to start. This is kind of a big question. So um, Steve mentioned uh, in one of our episodes that uh, some of the most um, thematic and most interesting dialogue came from Halo 4. Um, can you guys tell me since since the games have become uh, more of a story of Cortana and Chief, how that's affected you two going into the booth to do these lines since now you know each other um, and I'm assuming you guys are, are friends outside of, of Halo. Um, how do you approach it now when you're going in to play these two characters together? You know, it's funny, we didn't meet each other until right before we started um, recording Halo 4. And that was when we have a real affinity for that piece because that was when we got to work together for the right. first and really only time. Because the first we and had, only time, yeah. Yeah, we were in the booth together for that. Um, and uh, so that, and, and we had some really, you know, as you know, very emotional scenes. Right, <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that we had to dive into. Um, but Steve and I, when we met, felt, and I, I, I'll say it, it felt like, oh my God, I've been taking a ride with this one person <laughs> for 10 years and I finally get to meet him. He's the only person who can really understand what I've been experiencing. So right. it was, it was like we, we were just instantly friends. Yeah. Um, and so doing that, doing that game was particularly fun, as I said, because we got to be together. And since then, you know, I've been doing um, performance capture. So I'm actually working with different actors, weirdly. Hmm. I'm not working with Steve, you know, I'm working with right. uh, uh, an actor named Bruce who is doing the performance capture for Steve. And I'm working with, you know, other people who are playing other roles. And so, Steve and I, we um, connect like, pretty regularly though. Yeah. Um, but so it's a different, it's a completely different experience for me now. Is Sorry. there a certain way um, that you approach that now that you know him doing Halo 5 and now Halo Infinite where you're looking at this role and now you, you've got a, you know, you know the, the guy you're talking to, you know the voice actor now behind um, the, the chief. Do you approach those lines any differently um, than you did, you know, let's say in like Halo 1? Uh, no, because, well, I know the character better. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, Steve is many things, but Steve, to me, is not Master Chief. He just really sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say so. So, so I'm not <laughs> thinking of Steve particularly when I'm playing okay. the Oh, mm. I'm thinking of the character gotcha. who Steve happens to sound like. You know? <laughs> Amazingly, an incredible yeah. resemblance. Yeah, it's it's right. really amazing how much he's like Steve. We should we get you to voice match him sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and of course, you know, it, it's all related because Steve has voiced this character and created this character. Mm. But I'm not thinking of him personally. Gotcha. When, you know, I I can't because it's just it's totally different. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and, and so, how about you, Steve? When you're when you're you know going into the booth, especially doing these more um, emotional and, and cinematic things than than what you used to do, as you know we mentioned in, in Halo One, we had a bunch of combat dialogue, a little bit of stuff to move the story along. But now we're seeing you know you and your your final moments in, in Halo Four with uh, Cortana, uh, you know possibly you know dying in that the very end of that game. <laughs> You, you, you mentioned to us that uh, there was a, a, a real emotional uh, day in the booth for a certain recording. Can you walk um, some of our new listeners through kind of what that was like doing? You love um, this story. You love I do this love story. this story. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I do. And it's, it's, it's uh, 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 even now, sometimes it's hard to even talk about. But, um, you know, first of all, just to back up a little bit, um, uh, you know, it was, it was a, it was so 
much fun and so helpful to be able to work with Jen Taylor. It was just, um, it, 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 it elevated my game, I think. It challenged me in a way that, that I, as a voice actor, I don't know that I've ever been challenged like that. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I remember those days going into that that studio in Seattle, and and it was, um, you know, com you know conversations I was having with myself was like, you better be on, boy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh. you better you you, you got to bring your A game today because you're you're. Um, you know, it's funny. I have a, 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 a similar story with with. Uh, the woman who is now my wife of the last 16 years. And the, one of the very first times we ever met, she's a voice actor as well. <clears throat> and one of the first times we ever met was in the, in the booth. Uh, and we were, it was, it was her and I, and, and another guy. And I, and I knew she was a big time voice actor. And I remember going into the studio that day. I was like, Oh, Steve, you're with the big kids now. You know, <laughs> you better step it up. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, and then I married her. <laughs> so, uh, but but I, f I felt the same way with Jen because Jen has a a uh, you know a, a, a stage presence. She's a stage actor. She's a a you know multi you know what are the you know multifaceted you know she she brings a lot to the party, and um, you know I I really felt like I needed to 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 up the game. So when we got to the scenes, you know, particularly towards the end of the story in, in, in Halo 4, um, you know, I remember thinking, you know, you just got to leave it all on the floor here, you know, and if it works, it works. If, you know, if it doesn't, it doesn't, mm -hmm. but they're not going to say you didn't try. And so when we got to some of those really emotional ending scenes, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know that I've ever been, uh, as vulnerable as a voice actor as I was on that day. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's such a vivid memory to me. Uh, right. And, and, and it's funny every once in a while, you know, I'll, I'll go back and, and, and listen to it. And most of the time when I go back and listen to the, to the cut scenes in, in halo games, the, 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 you know, the main thing I think about is, boy, you could have done that better. Boy, you could have done that. better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish you would have done this, that they, you know, all that stuff. But with those scenes, I, I, I'm pretty proud of them. And, and um, it, it, it was just a joy. It was such a fun uh, experience to have as, as, an, as a voice actor uh, and, 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 and one of my favorite moments in my career, actually. Steve That's Down. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, just to make you e even feel more, oh. when I think of Cortana, I think of Jen. Now, oh, I will say, go. no, Classic. but no, I, I, but, but, what, but, but Jen has a different experience with it. And she's right. You know, Bruce Thomas does the, you know, he, he is master chief when she's in there doing the, and he's a great guy and he does a yeah. fabulous job. Uh, and, and now there's more, you know, Jen's my only Cortana. <laughs> so oh. it's wow. easier for me, you know, and I don't, I, you know, I, I say that because it's easier for me to picture Jen than it is to picture Cortana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, right. As, as I hear weird that. As that may sound, yeah. because Jen's yeah. a real person right. and with real feelings and real eyes and real everything, you know. So, uh, you know, when I, you know, when we have that, because like Jen said, the last time we worked together was Halo 4. We didn't work together physically in the same room for Halo 5, and we didn't for Infinite. Mm -hmm. um, Although we, I was kind of around. Yeah, you. Yeah. We, I saw you. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, we were. Yeah, we. I was kind of around when she was doing some of the things, which was, it was great. That that was another great experience, unique to to Halo Infinite, right. is that, um, you know, I got to watch Jen and Bruce work together, and and that was oh, also right. a, that that was a great experience for me to be able to watch those two act out the scene, mm -hmm. and then be able to apply that. Uh, to what I was going to do in the in the voice booth. Wow, huh, well, that's interesting. I'm I'm so glad we got both of you here together. Yeah, I think, this uh, is great. I, I I think individually you guys are amazing. Uh, you know, no matter what, but to to have you both here to to talk about it is uh, that's something rare. We don't do a whole lot of 
uh, dual or, or two person interviews. Uh, but I felt like this one uh, was was appropriate to try and get you two together. To hear you guys bouncing off of each other when you talk about this kind of adds a, a lot more credence to the emotional factor behind that entire uh, that entire scene at the end of the game. So that makes a lot of sense. Well, Steve also thought it was funny just because I they I had to cry. You know, I, it was a very emotional, <laughs> scene and I had to cry. I was crying yeah. over yeah. and over and over again, yeah. and they'd be like, "Okay, we're done with that scene." Yeah. We're like, okay, great. And I'd like, yeah. you know, drive. Well, <laughs> and, then, so and then they'd go, oh, sorry, no, we're going to go back to it. And be like, okay. <laughs> But, but the, you know, that was the amazing, you know, Jen can turn that on and off like a light switch, mm. you know, and, and, you know, it used to crack me up, you know, as we would be doing some, you know, big emotional scene and, you know, would be done and I'd be a, an emotional wreck and Jen would be like, <laughs> uh, can we break for a Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, you got any coffee out there? You know, I mean, she, I mean, but that's, you know, that's, that's her talent. That's yeah. her. Oh, you know, the, 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 she can tap into those things. Yeah. Um, you know, in 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 that in a, in a professional way, and, yeah. and it was it was it was. I got to tell you, it was fun to watch. <laughs> wow. I was looking forward to having Jen here to tell us her her side because I remember, yeah. like I said, you, you mentioned that story um, last time I, I had you on the show. We talked about it for a little bit, but uh, to hear you know Jen Jen's side of it was. Uh, <laughs> is, is, yeah. <laughs> it just adds, uh, like Ronan said, just so just some more emotional beats. Yeah, yeah, it really does. I am not leaving you here, John. I've waited so long to do that. So to end, um, as Halo Four got more thematic and, and emotional for both of you, um, Jen, I'll start with you. Can you tell me if you approached the character um, any differently as far as like how you delivered lines or how you were thinking about the lines as they were being fed to you um, as you kind of became uh, more and more, uh, you know, the character um, Cortana? So we, like we said, we started out with you know a lot of explanation-y type lines from Halo sure. One, uh, and and by Halo 4, you guys are just, it's its an outright, you know, uh, drama going on on screen, on screen for us. Does that change how you approached Cortana? Well, sure. Also, by that point, I had gotten to know her a lot better. Mm. You know, every time we do a game and every time that you get to experience these characters, we do too. And we get to learn more and more about them and reading the books and stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, <clears throat> I, I learned a lot about my character reading was it Fall of Reach? I yeah. remember being like, oh, yeah. oh, okay, that makes sense. That's why she did that. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I'm learning stuff too. Yeah. So I felt like, if anything, it's just because I got to know her better, as I said. Okay. But, uh, you know, we had different directors. It was, as you say, very different thematically. Um, but I felt like I had a good base with her, so I felt right. comfortable, you know, stepping, heading that way. Um, but am I approaching it differently other than I'm going in a different way? This character is doing something different, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, Steve, you um, probably had a, a harder time in here. I think um, Jen and, and Cortana get, like I said, most of the screen time as far as voice goes um, for Halo 1 uh, and Halo 2. Really, in, in Halo 4 is the first time that we really see Chief kind of breaking out of, uh, you know, his silent character shell. Um, what was that like for you moving from not just four, but into Halo 5 and having that uh, kind of rivalry um search for for cortana and then mm -hmm. um you know moving into halo infinite which we can only assume is going to have just as good a story how does that uh you know feel for you to to go from such little or such like combat hardened type of dialogue to this uh more emotional stuff with uh with cortana and, and just the world in general well i remember when i first saw the script for uh halo 4 uh i was so excited because uh, after we had finished Halo 3, uh, you know, I just, I, and still feel that there's such a rich story there, you know, not only, I mean, for the entire Halo universe, but also the relationship between Cortana and Master Chief, I just think mm -hmm. is a, is a, you know, 
it can be a simple story if you want it to be, but it can right. be a very complex story on on another level. And that's the way I thought about it because, you know, and I made made no secret about the fact that I am not a gamer. I am right. the worst Halo player you have ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> I guarantee you. So, but what what attracts me and what keeps me interested in in doing this is the story. And right. you know, and I always thought, you know, that 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 the, the, the the relate the Cortana Master Chief's uh, story is so layered, mm. and and it's really up to the uh, viewer or the or the participant into how they want to approach it. And um, so you know we had never really tapped that until Halo Four. And when I saw what they were doing, I was like, yes, finally, <laughs> we're going to scratch the surface on this on this relationship. And it was, uh, you know, that, it, that that's what made it, you know, that's, it, it, I was so eager to to be involved in that. And um, right. yeah, 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 it was That's great. gratifying for us. Mm. Yes. Right. right. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it was, you know, uh, nice to see the, the script be more than, you know, a page or two, right? <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess my takeaway from this is that Steve isn't the one doing all the motion capture for these games, doing all the cool flips and whatnot. That kind of <laughs> blows my mind all of a sudden, you know? <laughs> Steve is, I don't know. Been... Steve can do a flip, though. Man. No, no, no. Steve cannot. <laughs> not now, not then, not ever. <laughs> I'd like oh, to see that. I, yeah, right? I would too, no, nobody wants to see that. I admit. You really don't want to see that. Oh, I'm, I, I'm writing three four three right now. I'm gonna you let go. <laughs> Send some letters. Send some letters. Steve, Steve wants to do his own stunts. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Whoa, cowboy! All right, so I guess my, my, my question is for Jen, uh, and this is more of a broad question, not specifically related to Halo, but you, got, you, you obviously have a lot of experience bringing a, a wide range of voice uh, characters to life, anywhere from, you know, uh, Peach and Mario and Toad and Salem right. from Ruby and onwards. So I guess my question is, like, what has been the most important learning point for you in your experience so far doing voice work in video games? Wow, that's a really good question. Nobody, I don't think, has ever asked me that question. He's good. This is this is why he's here with me because he he comes up with some fantastic this, this questions that I wouldn't think of. You know, I think one of the things that I try to do, and one of the th that I continue to try to do. I'm sorry, my cat is climbing my leg. <laughs> oh no! Um, Sidebar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that I try to learn something new in every job and not walk in feeling like I know this sounds funny but not walk in feeling like I got this I know what I'm doing yeah. I try to walk in like a newbie every time I'm doing my job okay. um, because I learn so much more that way hmm. so that's what I'm trying to stay I know that sounds funny but I'm trying I try to stay as open as possible each time I walk into whatever job I'm doing yeah Ready to learn something new each time, basically. Ready to learn something new each time. Yeah. What can I learn from the people that I'm working with? What can I learn? You know, I just did, I just worked on the Halo TV show and that was a, I learned so much. <laughs> yeah. I learned about, you know, I even learned about my character, right? I mean, I learned right. not just working in a different medium, which was very different, <laughs> of course, um, but, but, doing it with different people, working on the project in a, you know, slightly different way was really fascinating. And I tried to be as new and fresh and, and walk <laughs> without any preconceived notions about what it's going to be. That's what I try to do. Yeah. That's the thing I have learned is my, is it, it's, and it's a great tool, I think actually, because you can soak up everything from everybody <laughs> <laughs> become a thief basically yeah uh steve uh i guess i mean obviously you know mostly for the chief and stuff like that but what, what has been the most important experience for you so far even with primarily being the chief and approaching each role for each halo game so far what has been the most important for you i guess 
Stay you know, flexible. I, well, yeah. I, you know, I mean, yeah, thanks. You're right. Yeah, there you go. Stay flexible. Cortana Steve. has all the answers. And, but, and, and, oh. and, she, and she's right about this one for sure. Yeah. Um, because that you do, there is that danger when you're doing a role over a period of time. Yeah. That you walk in and say, "Yeah, I got this. I got this." You know, and 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 you don't, um, uh, you know, you don't give it what you should be giving it. Right. Uh, to be honest with you, um, the the guy that I worked with the most on Halo Infinite um, is a guy by the name of Paul Crocker, and and he was one of the co-writers of the story, and and uh, you know directed us uh, on the on the voice end of it. Um, uh, the the voice actor end of it and uh what was what was what he gave me was first of all he was he he knew the character and and he was excited about it mm. and he brought that excitement to me and it's he kind of reminded me of how exciting this story is and yeah. how interesting this character character can be if if you let it so it's not a matter of of you know going into the booth and you know say okay well, now you got to sound like master chief that has nothing to do with it mm. you know it's it, well you know, it's all about you know bringing that character in into the room with you and he was really good at at um uh, helping me do that because you got to remember you know uh you know, we do this, every, you know, up until Infinite, we were doing this, you know, on average about every four years. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're knocking on six years here between, you know, Halo Guardians and Halo Infinite. Mm. So it's not like, a, you know, a role that we do. It's not like we're doing a TV series where once a season, you know, you're you're living this character for a few months. Right. You right. know, we don't live the character at all for, for years on end. And then... You know when it's time to go back in you you, you know you got to get yourself in, in, into that place again yeah yeah and there's a bit of catch-up you have to do right? there's catch up yeah. yeah yeah and paul <laughs> for me was really good uh because he was enthusiastic about it and and uh that 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 enthusiasm sort of you know um uh, transferred to me and 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 it helped me to to to, to really you know get up and running and and so by the time we went into the booth you know i felt like i was you know at, at, at a full gallop at that point mm -hmm. that's awesome that's awesome yeah very cool i was created to lock down cortana but i don't know why what did she do that was so wrong so uh jen the first part of this question is for you and it um really uh kind of has a, a kind of multi-part to it but basically um i, I want to know how you approach the different characters because you play more than one character um not just in the games but in in, in real life you're cortana the virtual assistant which by the way thank you uh for <laughs> taking <laughs> answering all of my questions when i'm on the computer and having the uh, best jokes as well yeah, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> Have you had me speak Klingon yet? I can speak Klingon. <laughs> I had no, I didn't. There, I did not yeah. Yeah. So the the first part of the question is how you approach these different characters within the game, uh, Halsey, Cortana, and you even played uh, some of the minor characters, which I didn't know in the original Halo. <laughs> um, you were a, a, a couple of the the Marines um, that were out there. Randos, uh, yeah. Yeah. Heads up, everyone! This is it. We're entering the ring's atmosphere in five. So uh, how, how, how do you kind of divide these two characters, Halsey and Cortana, when you uh, when you approach them versus some of the randos? They're so different for me, uh, physically, emotionally, obviously. They're very different characters. Luckily, you know, I can keep them sounding similar because I sound similar to myself. Right. Um, but <laughs> how do you make yourself sound older <laughs> there is um i you know i there's truly it's just uh technical stuff that i do okay. as far as placement where you know where i'm putting this in my voice what's right. happened to my vocal cords over the years you know what i mean i think about those kinds of things okay and i also play you know um you know i've i feel like i've played uh cortana from you know newbie brand little newbie cortana right you know when she's young and, uh, and so i've played her you know many mm. many different ages um 
but I think of Cortana and Halsey as very different, full, you know, I, I, I really get into the physical aspects of these characters too, even though right. most of the time I'm just voicing it, but I need to know how Dr. Halsey stands. I need to right. know how Cortana stands. I need to know where they lead physically with their body mm. and how they move. Um, so I approach it as a full blown, as a full blown character. If I'm just have a couple lines and they're and they tack it on at the end and they go, Jen, can you just come over here and play the pilot? I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> just try to make it sound different. I mean, that's truly what you know what you do. For yeah. Okay. Parts. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a great uh, explanation. You know, we're, we're a voice actor centric show. This is what we do here. So we're, we're familiar with um, voice actors, you know, kind of uh, doing more physicality stuff in the booth. A lot of people wouldn't think about that. But, yeah. you know, we had a one of our um, interviews talked about uh, them needing to play out like a death scene. So they kind of fake strangled somebody with, uh, oh, yeah, with, sure. a, with, a, with a cord. So, so when you're, when you're doing Halsey, um, do you do anything mentally to, cause she's kind of a darker kind of yes. character sometimes. Um, do you ever find yourself doing anything completely different um, when you're playing Halsey as opposed to Cortana? Well, yes, they're very different characters. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Do you mean physically yes, or? Um, oh yeah, physically, I think of them very differently. I also, you know, Cortana would sit and listen to you talk for hours if that's what you needed to do. If the chief could talk for hours, <laughs> there, listen to him talk. Whereas Halsey does not have time. No, doesn't have time. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, I most of my thought, most of my thinking was. Halsey is just waiting for you to finish the sentence because she, <laughs> she has got shit to do. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? What, yeah. 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 Trying, I love it. Yeah. She is yeah. trying to save everybody. And if you could just get out of her way, she'll listen to you for, you know, but, but like, okay, fine. You, you're done with whatever. This doesn't have any importance to me anymore. I'm moving on. I really don't have time. So <laughs> even physically that manifests itself in that, when I, uh, and I'm trying to think, you know, in Halo, I guess it was in Halo 5, um, I would oftentimes not even look at characters who were talking to me because I just, uh, I don't have time. I've done yeah. have time. That's I've when she's at her most sassy yeah. too, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you're bothering me. I have to save everybody. Stop giving me a hard time. What's going on here? You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're just very, very different cool. people. <clears throat> so physically yeah. they respond differently i think you could sum up halsey by saying she does not suffer fools <laughs> there you go, there you go. That, that's a great way to put it the yeah. way you've explained it and just kind of that, that that adds a little more when i'm thinking about the character of, of halsey mm -hmm. to kind of picture her in that mindset is uh that's that's awesome right um, i don't think she's being rude she just right. doesn't have time. She's exactly. got so much to do and you are getting in the way of her doing things. Yeah, yeah. it's very matter of fact. Yeah, type yeah. Of. priority yeah. sort of type of thing, basically. <laughs> yeah. Captain Lasky would like a word with you. It took you long enough. Love it. So um, uh, aside from that, when you're doing Cortana as the virtual assistant, was there any difference there? Did you kind of have to drop the, the Halo <laughs> mindset for that? Or did that maybe oh, yes. help you do do that yeah. uh, tell, tell me yeah, about yeah, yeah. being an ai they wanted they definitely wanted it to sound we wanted to sound like cortana but she's a like a happy cortana in a really good place mm. okay and you don't have to worry no about rampancy. there's no <laughs> rampancy there's no battle you're just being as helpful as possible and cheerful, but not annoying. You know, I mean, we had to, they had to test my voice to make sure that it would work oh, for wow. this. Yeah, because not, you know, you you have to have a certain timbre. And um, so we, I went through a series of tests to make sure it would work. And, and then, I'm sorry, I'm dodging my cat. In my, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a theme for our show. Yep, we, we're, <laughs> we're very, we're a very cat centric yep. show. In fact, well, one of one of our voice actors had a cat come come on the show, and the cat got its own Twitter account the next day. Yes, with more <laughs> more more followers than we. Have. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, pirate deserves one. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, um, it, it, it'll probably happen. It'll, yeah, at this rate. Pirate, you're gonna have your own little kill, sweet girl. <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it didn't feel, it, does, it doesn't feel like I'm playing the character when I'm doing the voice mm. for, you know, for the game, for uh, the phone. It's for the virtual assistant. It's, it's totally different. <laughs> Walk me uh, like a quick little run through of how something like that works. Are you recording every single piece of dialogue said, or is it a little bit of machine learning that adapts your voice? Like a lot of machine learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I do is we come up with, first of all, there are certain direct phrases that I say, you know, like, hi, I'm Cortana. How can I help you? Kinds, kinds of stuff. Right. Okay. Um, but then they were also, had me read thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of sentences in the exact same way. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I would have, <laughs> yeah. So I would have a phrase and I would say it, um, we, it would be our, what we call our match file. And it would, it, you know, something like, Hey, I like Steve. And Every at the beginning of every page, we would go back and have me listen to it and repeat, Hey, I like Steve. And then I would wow. have to repeat all of these random sentences in the same way, in wow. that exact, you know, in that same tone. And wow. oftentimes they had nothing to do with it, be like, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of, I can't even, I have no copy around me anywhere. <laughs> of course, it would be something like, My Lanta is great, you know what I mean? Like, nothing to do with <laughs> weird. Or, <laughs> I'm my really lanta <laughs> that's what you pulled out yeah right sometimes, 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 okay the show is not sponsored by my lanta that, that probably revealed more than what was yeah. I, I actually don't have any my lanta um, <laughs> but we would sometimes have things that were terrible like hey the kitten died you know or something awful wow. like that right like and i'd have to say it in the exact same way um, fruit is great. I don't know. I can't think that one. <laughs> okay. I, I was I was curious if because like I've had asked you to look up a recipe or something. I was curious if you actually had to say the response that I got for yeah. looking up something random on, on no, the no, no. <laughs> Okay. Well that makes learned, perfect sense. So, uh, so that that's interesting. That's very different. Um uh we haven't had any actual AIs on on the show before, so thank you for sharing that yeah. with us. <laughs> um the, <laughs> The second part of this question goes to you, Steve. So um, I know that uh, doing obviously Master Chief in the Halo series has um, you know been an iconic thing for you, but you've also got to do Master Chief in in books and other things. So tell me about how you approach um, doing these these audio books. Which, by the way, I, I I've listened to just about every single Halo audio book out there. I love the ones that you guys are in, and I really really wish you guys would do more. I don't know if that's a you know just like a time or a scheduling thing, or if it has to do with the publisher. If it's the publisher. I will go get on them and tell them that you guys need to be doing more of these books. Um, but I, I love hearing you, you you narrate. So how do you approach narrating and then being the the, the chief in in these audio books and, and little mini shorts on TV? Well, it is interesting because uh, I've never done a full book. Uh, you know what they have me do is when a new book comes out, they'll have me do you know a chapter or yeah. or maybe a few pages just to sort of you know promote it and. Um, so you're not, <clears throat> you know, I'm not reading, I'm not necessarily the chief in it, although right. I will do his, the, he will have lines in, in the story that I'm reading, but I'm also narrating it. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, to me, it's sort of a fine line between, uh, you know, suggesting Master Chief and then actually being. Right. Um, and those are the two, you know, so I try to walk that line as, as best I can, but you know, I like doing it. It's, it's fun to do. It's, um, uh, you know, I, I, if they asked me to do a full book, I'd be, I'd be happy to do it. But, um, uh, it, although I will say this, people who do that, you know, uh, quote unquote professionally, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for a living, if you will, it is a particular skill. Uh, and I don't, I would not necessarily put myself in their uh, arena uh, as an equal. Because um, I, I have done one or two audiobooks. I used, when I was in Chicago, I used to uh, volunteer at this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, a uh, place called Recordings for the Blind. 
Sorry, I'm losing my voice. No oh, wow. no. Don't let that happen. I, I, I don't want to be held responsible. Yeah, for that's, this. Wow. They'll be coming after us on that one. Yeah, it happened on this day. Yeah, right. Um, but I used to volunteer for this uh, organization called Recordings for the Blind, and I'd go in, and I'd go and read all kinds of books, you know, technical books and and books about professional wrestlers and you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it was interesting. But I tell you what, it was a real appreciation for people who you know are are, are the top of uh, in the top of their game for these kind of things because. Um, and I listen to audio books like when we travel back and forth from Florida to go back up north. You know, well, the, the way we occupy our time is listening to podcasts and and audio books, and um, you can tell the good ones from the not so good ones. And <laughs> yeah. the good ones are really good. And it is a as a, you know, like I said, I would not put myself in their league. Uh, right. But but the audio books are a different beast. I tell yeah. you, audio books are the marathons of voiceover. There you go. Perfectly I mean, said. Are you? You'll spend, I do audiobooks, and you'll spend eight hours in the studio just reading, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, yeah. a day for however long, right? And the other thing that I think is hard for people who do audiobooks or, or hard for people who are breaking in is that you are paid for recorded hour, not mm. for how long you work, but for the recorded hour. Right. Mm. Which makes sense because, right? Because it could take me 20 hours to read a book and it right. could take Steve eight hours to perform that same book. And they don't want to pay me more because I took more time. Right. Mm -hmm. However, you also have to read the book and prep the book and be ready to go. You know, you have to create all of these characters, prep it, wow. make sure you understand. I mean, when I do an audiobook, I read the book at least three times wow. before wow. I record it. And I'm doing that all on my own dime. So there are, a, you know, it's it's not. And I think that some people are better at just, you know, probably <laughs> sight reading it going through and not even doing any of those things. But I don't know. You have to create characters. So I don't know how you yeah. do that. It's, um, it's definitely tough. I, I tell you, I, I just did my, my first audio book and I saw a lot of those issues and I didn't want that to be um, the problem of the person recording for me. So what I did was I had the narrator read all of the narrated lines, just like a regular voiceover. Mm -hmm. And then I hired a voice actor per character that I had in the book. So all of the honest is on me to edit together. Yeah. So now I've got right. 10 right. characters with all these all this dialogue and then my narrator with the main dialogue and then now i have to go through and edit yeah. um that way i could pay them as as regular you know voice actors mm -hmm. um and it, it it is it is tough i'm mad respect to both of you for you know taking on those things i know um obviously you know part of it is you know to, to get paid and to work but you're also giving the fans that don't get to hear you uh you know like you said in between the games you're giving them an outlet to to listen to you, you know, expand on the Lord that they love mm -hmm. and, and, to do, and to listen to the things um, that they that they want to hear. Because I, I, you two guys are, are just, um, you know, the embodiment of the character. So yeah. as, as soon as I heard Jen in, in one of the, the Halo audiobooks that I was listening to, I was like, ah, I wish this was an hour longer. <laughs> uh, uh, that's nice. I was going to say, I yeah. don't feel like I've done that many of you that. haven't that's no. that's that's a that's a shame I, like i said i wish you guys would do uh, obviously i know you can't do them all there's just it's too much it's too medium much. out yeah. there i would absolutely do more if i was asked to do them i would surely do them hmm. yeah well yeah. let's see if we, we've made some stuff happen before so let's <laughs> see. Well, we're gonna, we'll put it we'll put it out there yeah. um, does this mean we have to give you a commission no, <laughs> absolutely. Abs I just want to. I just want you to sign a copy of the book for me. Though. Okay. <laughs> um, the the last thing, Steve, before I turn it back over to Rona and we get into some of these community questions, um, is so uh, Jen obviously has Cortana as the, as the AI, but recently we saw your voice um, giving us driving directions. Can you tell? <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about uh, turning right and, uh, and how yeah, that right. all works? Right. <laughs> Eyes up. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I downloaded uh, yeah. that as soon as I saw it. I said, "Wait, what? I can, yeah. uh, St Steve is going to give me driving directions? Yeah. How did that a happen? And, and what was it like doing yeah. that?" Accident ahead. It could be a trap. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> so I it, it was fun. It yeah. was fun to do ways. Um, 
it's funny. I was uh, we were uh, in in as I mentioned before we we started the show. Uh, I live in Florida and it gets a little hot here in the summertime. So what? we sort of escape yeah, back what? up north. <laughs> <clears throat> I know, news flash. That's crazy. Um, That's crazy. But uh, so we were up in, a, in uh, uh, we had rented a place up in Saugatuck, Michigan. And please uh, tell me you listened to yourself while you were driving up there. <laughs> well, no, no, I didn't because I hadn't done it yet. Okay. Oh, on, on so the way I back, had, though, surely. I had recorded it while we were in Saugatuck. And the house we had rented had like a loft, and that's where our quote unquote it. studio was. Mm -hmm. And that just uh, adds so another that's... depth of you giving me directions from yep. your loft. <laughs> yep. <laughs> My loft. <laughs> so we, uh, anyway, when it came time to the, the, the day to do it, I, you know, I'm up in the loft, and there was a naturally uh, a huge thunderstorm was rolling through while we're recording. Oh, wow. For ways. <clears throat> and, um, I met, you know, every once in a while, I'd be in the middle of a, of, of a line and you'd be some huge clap of thunder. And I'd be, ah, sorry about that, guys. You know, because, <laughs> you know, the, the loft wasn't very well insulated. Hmm. And uh, they said, no, no, that's great. <laughs> it, it adds to the drama. You know? Right. <laughs> but um, it was fun to do. I mean, it was a kick. I'd never done anything like that before. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, it was just... Um, you know, the funny thing about it was when I did it, they said, well, th this will, because they do this, Waze does this from time to time with various celebrities will we'll come in and read, you know, this stuff. And um, so when they I, they said, yeah, this will probably be up for, I don't know, a couple weeks, maybe a month. And and then and, and that's as long as it'll run. And then we may bring it back when the game comes out because there'll be some, you know, heightened interest. Well, right. it's never gone off, and I. Nice. I was, I I'm did not that turning back. it off. The only way <laughs> yeah, they're getting yeah. it off is if they take it away from me. Yeah. So yeah, it's run this whole time, um, and I, I I refer to it as the biggest little job I've ever done, because it was not a big job from a from a dollars and cents standpoint, <clears throat> but I have gotten more feedback. Mm -hmm from doing that uh than than uh, you know a lot of other things that i've done <laughs> wow so it, it, it it's kind of a kick because yeah you're always telling me where to go and you know, all that all that kind of thing <laughs> yeah right um, I, I i love it they, yeah, they, gotta, it would, they gotta get gin in there too to, yeah, to have sure. bo bo both of you would be good <laughs> just be well what fantastic. would be funny is to have us both do it and argue about which way yeah. <laughs> that's what, yes. That's, yes that's what right. i was thinking yeah. especially with all the the cheeky lines that jen gives us when uh -huh. you're driving in the game <laughs> Absolutely. Oh no, I you know they're, they're, you know I think you just got us another gig. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks to your driving, right? right. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. Oh uh, goodness. So so uh, before I but before I turn it over, how how did that happen? How did how did this uh, this thing pop off? Was it a suggestion from somebody in three four three for for ways to come in and have you? do this or did they contact you how, how did everything kind of play out because it they, seemed they, random well, well the funny of... thing about it was daily um i'm trying to think of who the celebrity was i heard somebody very well known african -American. elvis no it wasn't elvis <laughs> oh, oh. um oh his name is escaping the famous famous actor um I don't know. Anyway, sorry. His his name is anyway. I heard him on he, he Robert De Niro. It was not Robert De Niro. <laughs> he was African American, and he's he's uh, his name's on the tip of my tongue. Um, he played the president Denzel once. Washington. Say again. Denzel. No, not Washington. Denzel. It wasn't Denzel. Older. Is it um, the Allstate guy? No, not him either. <laughs> the <Allstate> no. <laughs> The Allstate. <laughs> That's his real name, by the way. Dennis, the Allstate. Uh, Allstate Dennis, guy. It's Dennis Haber, I believe. I, 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 I'm embarrassed that his name is not coming to me. But in any case, uh, I thought, oh, you know what? They should have Master Chief do this. This would be fun. And I told my agent, I said, I, and I didn't know how oh to get Oh, my God. Him. Was it Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman. Oh, Thank oh, you. There we go. All right. Thank you. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. So Morgan Freeman did it once, and I heard did he him. Did really? Yeah, he <laughs> did it. Oh, no, my gosh. And I wish I had that. I, I heard, heard him do it, and I thought, and he was great, of course. Uh, but I thought, they should have Master Chief do this. <laughs> so I told my agent, I said, you should reach out to whoever you reach out to for ways, and they, like, zero interest. 
nothing flatline <laughs> uh several years later you know fast forward to 2020 or early 2021 uh they yeah i mean they just reached out and so i'm not sure oh, what the chronology for him. is <laughs> It's like he had a yeah, game I, coming I, in or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure whether who initiated it, whether it was Waze, 343, I, I, I don't know. But, but, uh, there it was. <laughs> and I have to say that the, that the, the uh, people who directed me were fans. So that might have had awesome. something to do with yeah. it. Yeah. Very they, cool. They were Halo fans for sure. I, I had to do a bunch of stuff for them after we got done doing the Waze stuff for like, their friends and their kids. And, <laughs> their <daughter. laughs> I had to tell their kids to finish their homework. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's going to be it for uh, our, my main questions. Ronan, I'm going to turn the community questions over uh, to you while I prep the outro. All right. So a lot of these questions, well, actually all these questions came from the r slash Halo community on, on the uh, Halo subreddit. <clears throat> and, uh, our first one here is from, uh, I believe, Q underscore 98. If I'm butchering your name, guys, I apologize. Sometimes <laughs> I get these, sometimes I don't. But uh, the first question is, he says, or they say, due to the pandemic, was your recording lines miles away from each other or uh, other sin significantly more challenging than in, in the studio together? Or did you find a way to make things flow naturally once you got acclimated to the changes? This is for, yeah, for, for both of you guys, but I guess we could start with uh, Steve in this case. Well, yes, it did change, and 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 Jen and I have an interesting story about, you know, Halo and the pandemic, or Halo Infinite and the pandemic. Mm. Is that we were uh, the, the the way this normally works is, you know, Jen lives in Seattle, I'm in Florida. They would fly me out to Seattle to to do sessions, and so what what would this have been, Jen, in February? It was March. March. Yeah, um, we were right in the right in the beginning of March. It's the beginning of March. I, I'm out there for a session. Jen is there. We're you know we weren't working together, but we were working separately in the same building, if you will. And um, can, uh, can I clarify? Was it March of this yeah, year? Or this March year, of last yeah. year. March of 2020. Okay. Of 2020. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, so so. Uh, you know the pandemic was already a thing but but I, let me just set the yeah, scene really quick. we're looking across the street and i believe it's called evergreen hospital which is where the first patients in kirkland were being taken oh wow who yeah. had they were the it was the first hospital in in the seattle area <laughs> in this town called kirkland that was or Redmond, Kirkland, that was treating COVID patients. Mm. And we could see it and we could yeah. hear the ambulances going mm. by. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. So we were all, we were freaked <laughs> out. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, I can imagine. That's terrifying. Yeah. But, but I think for me, I mean, it wasn't until I flew back home and, and like that day realized that, you know, the first significant outbreak had occurred blocks from where we were recording wow. and um you know so, so it was a bit uh, weird to say the least um but at that point then there was no more flying out to seattle they, they, they shut the studio down you know you know jen couldn't drive in to record i certainly couldn't fly in mm. that, that that was out of the question yeah. and it took several months for them to figure out <clears throat> excuse me how we were going to continue working because there was still work to be done and i have a little home very modest home studio um in fact i was just doing some work in there before we 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 came on uh that is literally a closet uh you know it, it, it's a phone booth but not quite as big <laughs> if you will <laughs> and uh they had to they you know flew out you know they they, they shipped out some equipment so because we needed to match the the tonal quality mm, from right, what I did right. in Seattle to what I was going to do in my little phone booth here in Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. So um, that was a challenge, that, but it was a challenge that was met and we were able to do it. And I would defy anybody when you when Infinite comes out to, to be able to, to detect any difference between <laughs> the work we did in Seattle and the work that we did in our perspective, uh, respective home studios. So that was a challenge. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. All right. So for the next question, this one comes from, uh, I believe, Serpix or Serpex from Reddit. 
Uh, they say, Steve, can you comment on whether or not Chief will be speaking a lot more this time around or how it compares at all to the previous entries? Uh, well, the short answer would be no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the somewhat extended answer would be uh, because it... So the first sessions that we did for Infinite were in 2019. And I've never had a, that long of a time between... You know, we're talking about two years. Yeah of um, session work for a project. It's never taken that long. It's usually, you know, uh, in five or in four or in any of the games, you know, it, it may have gone over a period of a few months, start to finish. Yeah. This went over a period of two years. So mm -hmm. in all honesty, I, in terms of volume, you know, uh, of what my, uh, you know, uh, the chief's dialogue, I really don't know. If he had a, if it, compared to the other games, I don't know if he's talking a lot or if he's not saying much <laughs> at all because it went over such a long period of time. It, mm. it, and who knows what they end up using? So, yeah, right. That's true. Um, that's true. Uh, you know, so the yeah, <clears throat> I, yeah. So my two answers are no, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next question comes from Stab Train, I believe, on Reddit, uh, and they say, <clears throat> from the looks of the campaign trailer, based on a lot of the footage we've seen so far one's got a bit of a preamble to it it seems like chief is going to be a lot more vocal about the things that are happening on the world uh in the world in the zeta halo things like the bantering with the weapon when you come across mission objectives talking to the new pilot friend so on and so forth and it seems like we're going to see more of the chief's personality so what is it like going uh getting to add more flavor to a hero that's been relatively silent or stoic for so long uh, well he, you know the question you know the it, it kind of answers itself because there are you know some new characters here that that the chief has some he he has some significant dialogue with mm. more than just Cortana mm. and um so uh, and they're different personalities they're very different personalities so uh you know the that fact alone would indicate that that, that the chief is going to be reacting differently to them <clears throat> than he would be to uh cortana and 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 or some of the other uh characters that he's uh you know uh had to be involved with yeah again your answer is no and i, <laughs> I don't know, and I don't know. <laughs> thank, you. <clears throat> thank you once again she's right yep, there you go cortana has all the answers as usual you have any idea what this is like <laughs> All right, next one comes from uh, Generic Dude on Reddit. Uh, oh, Generic. <laughs> generic dude. dude, come on. My favorite kind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the only kind. <laughs> oh, man. They asked, what were your favorite lines to record? Jan, you can take that one. <laughs> I don't know about my favorite line. I mean, the thing the thing that's also hard is that we record mm -hmm. stuff and then we don't hear it for yeah. a yeah. year or two. So it's hard to remember if they've, you know, some of the things that you really have fun with, they don't even put in the game mm. or whatever. Mm. Um, I re I personally really had fun doing the scenes in Halo 4 when Cortana is starting to mm. lose it and go rampant yeah. because yeah. they had me do the same lines over and over playing different characters. Like this is baby Cortana. This is super crazy uh, witty yeah, Cortana. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. This is yeah, wizard I Cortana. <laughs> And then they would meld them all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was really fun. That was really fun. I had a good time I, doing it. I remember that scene. That was, that's great yeah. the context yeah. to it. <laughs> being able to hear like the various aspects being meld together. Yeah. Now, that makes a lot more sense yeah. now. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's yeah. pretty that's cool. Uh, I'll give you, uh, there's a, uh, what, what I think is going to be one of the, the iconic lines that may come out of the infinite, uh, which, which has Whoa. been, in, well, it's, it, <laughs> Easy Cortana. Easy. Whoa. Uh, the missions changed. They always do. Uh, I've heard that line fed back to me because it appeared in a in a trailer for yes. Infinite, yeah, and I yeah. think that's mm -hmm. going to be ones. And and uh, I, I have several that are you know favorites. There's also the ones that that the fans you know request. But uh, one of my favorites is um, our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity whatever the cost if i remember that one on, yeah. on the bridge with with lasky yep. yes exactly was, exactly and, and wow. he comments something about uh you know something about you being human too uh, well I love, that, I love that 
and that's and that's his, his closing line uh in that scene is she told me that once yep about being a machine oh <laughs> Yeah, it's uh wow, that's hitting yeah. me in the feels. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's different. <laughs> that's a good. Uh, it's a, that, that's a, like you said. Though, I think Halo Four it gets a lot of um, uh, ire from the community sometimes about the gameplay, but yeah. you can't yeah. deny the story, the story. Um, yeah. that's that's going on there. I think they really nailed the the story aspects for for Chief and Cortana there. I couldn't um, agree more. Yeah, I, I, I do want to say uh, just. Um, so that the the couple of fans that sent in questions on our end um, or on my end uh, from the Halo Discord, um, most of those questions were already answered. And the one that you just answered was also asked by a uh, boy from um, the Halo Discord. So uh, Mr. Boy, sorry, we're not asking your rendition of that question, but that's already been answered. There. Yeah. But we're looking at you. Yeah, we see you. We <laughs> see you. <laughs> yeah. You're we there. You. We know you're there. Yeah. As, as, as soon as we're done, and we're, then come the messages. You didn't ask my yep, question. All the time. Uh -huh. Every time. Every time. <laughs> what are Chief and Cortana's favorite desserts? <laughs> Cortana waffles. Waffles? <laughs> that's a waffles? Dessert. Waffles with whipped cream and strawberries on top. Okay, wow. Cultured, well, cultured. I like it. This is oh, this yeah. is also this is great, but also terrible because I told myself whatever y'all said I was gonna make. The <laughs> next oh. day. So I guess I'm making waffles tomorrow. Nothing wrong yeah, with that. My, mine is um, and and seasonally appropriate. Uh, pumpkin pie with whipped cream. Oh yeah. Homemade oh, yeah. pumpkin pie. Yes. Homemade crust. Yum. Cream. You know, you can get me to do anything. If there's a piece of pumpkin pie at the end of the, of the trip. <laughs> you don't tip your hands to all the, the, the VO but jobs it, out there. Is yeah, that what? you, Steve, or is that Chief? Because I can't oh. eat waffles mm. or whipped cream. I mean, neither of those oh. things appeal to me, but they, that is Cortana's. Yeah. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. Yeah. No, right, right, yeah, I want, no, me, I'm chocolate. <laughs> Jen Taylor, chocolate all the way. Just chocolate. okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Master okay. Chief. Uh, What's big, he out there eating out there? Yeah. Big soft pretzels. He's <laughs> 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 And I'm talking about the kind that you get when they bring it to you, and it's hanging on a on a on a post. Yep. You ever seen? Yep. Yeah. That's so is that what we're talking about? Yes. Like at a Bavarian festival. Yeah. That's what the be chief a Chicago ordered. thing. <laughs> yeah. That's what the chief ordered. <laughs> Oh, uh, I can I can imagine him sitting out there on on a halo ring, pops his helmet off, and goes goes in for the pretzel. Boom, goes <laughs> all the way in, killing <laughs> killing Covenant's hard work, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he can share, he can share my waffles. There, there you go. go. <laughs> I, I want to rewind one like second. A, I want to rewind. Sounds real like quick. a euphemism somehow. I don't know why. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to rewind real quick though. I believe Steve said you can get him to do anything for pumpkin pie. Can we? Are you oh, saying we can get oh. you to do motion capture and the flips and stuff? Pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I backed myself into a corner. Here, didn't <laughs> I opened up a can of worms. There there. Go. Oh, look, we're almost out of time. <laughs> yeah, right. Steve, you need a weapon. I, <laughs> I need a piece of pumpkin pie. <laughs> All right, oh, we got one, one more. Steve yep. would use that pretzel as a weapon. Mm -hmm. there, you there you go. Amen. All right, this last one is for Steve. Uh, this one's got a little bit of a preamble as well. This one says. You've been the voice of Xbox's biggest mascot for 20 years now. You congratulations, the, yeah, by congratulations. the way. Thank you. Your work with the character has been consistently stellar, even when challenged with showing a more emotional side of the character like in Halo 4. You have shown, uh, seemed to show no signs of stopping, and I love how you've embraced the Chief, but do you plan, eventually plan to retire voicing him? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but she said. no. No. There you go. What she said. Simple answer. Why? I, I mean, I, I, I mean, to me, it's you know, why? Yeah. Why would I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you would be all, surprised. We have actually interviewed some people who have said, you know, I don't plan on going back to that role, yes. or you know, I, I did that role, and it was just, you know, it was just the, a, the another job for me. You'd, yeah. you'd be surprised. We're very happy that you guys love these yes. characters, though. Oh, just we wanted love to add these characters. That. Absolutely. Yeah. No, so I mean, I, I can't imagine. You know, that you know, no. The, the way this is going to go for me is they'll they'll retire me before I retire, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> which, there by you the go. way, is the way it usually goes. Yeah, goes. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. It's been a, a great show having you on. 
Um, we definitely appreciate all the, the insight. Um, we have uh, two um, kind of house cleaning things to do. One, I like to give our voice actors a chance to promote anything going on in their lives or any charity causes that they'd like or anything that they'd like to say. And then, um, Steve, you know, we like to have a closing line. Jen, you'll, you'll be new to this. We like oh. to do a, we'd like to do a closing line at the end. Um, so I got a couple of voice lines for you guys for our intro. Um, if you don't mind, uh, we'll go off off air for a minute, uh, okay. or at least mute on our side to go over them. But before we get to that section, um, we'll start with you, Jen. Do you have uh, anything upcoming that you'd like to promote other than Halo Infinite? Um, I was going to say, there's this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell, me, tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, any, about anything this, like. like Space war Ranger Warrior. Oh, guy. man. And, yeah. And well, that sounds he, awesome. Travels right? around and he so kills lots of aliens. Um, <laughs> Sounds like the Mandalorian. I can't wait. Pretty yeah, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I, I worked on a TV show called Halo, which mm. awesome. um, comes out uh, hopefully first quarter of next year. Looking forward and to it. And that was um, oh, super fun. So, I hope that um, y'all watch it. <laughs> Main society, that is my place. So, um, yeah, I have three animals and they have changed my life. I have yes, two dogs please. and a cat and they have changed my life. So, go let them change yours for the better. Yes, right. I, I agree. I, I agree that I was telling Steve earlier, you know, I, uh, the beginning of last year, I got uh, I got hit by a car. And um, if, oh, it, wasn't, if it wasn't for uh, my girlfriend and, and my dog, oh my God, I wouldn't have gotten yeah. through. I, I love, love animals. Um, so please, guys, for sure, if you if you have a local humane society, go check that out. Um, check out Jen in the upcoming Halo. Uh, is, is it a Netflix series or is it just a TV no. series? No, it's a Paramount, Paramount Plus. isn't it? Paramount. Okay, okay. so so check her out and um, Paramount. Paramount Plus on Paramount Plus, and then um, you know if you're in Seattle, look for some plays starring <laughs> Jennifer Taylor. <laughs> some plays somewhere. <laughs> some plays yeah, somewhere. Some yeah. plays that, that we've cl edited out. That you good. Know, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Steve, how about you? You got uh, any anything you'd like to plug uh, other than Halo Infinite? Anything upcoming for you? Any uh, charities or causes you'd like us to check out? Uh, other than uh, the game, of course, which we're extremely excited about. Yeah, I imagine that. And uh, I, I, I've, I've been sort of back on the convention circuit lately, and I've talked to... Uh, Good to see oh, that, too. Yeah. I, I've, re lot, I've yeah. retweeted those for you. That's, I love it. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I've talked to a lot of people who have played the beta version, and to a person, they love it. Now, they are telling me, so... <laughs> No, I'm not sure that that's the point. <laughs> Boy, it really sucked. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, from what little I've been able to see, I, I, I'm just, you know, I, I, I've, I, I've said we're in the 13th month of a nine month pregnancy, and this baby has got <laughs> to come out. Yeah, so, it's, it's, time. <clears throat> it's time. We're very yeah. excited about it. And um, uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, check out my. Uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter and the Instagram stuff on, you know, whatever conventions might be coming up. The one most recent will be actually um, leaving tomorrow for Providence, Rhode okay. Island. Hey, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, the biggest little convention, the biggest convention in the littlest state. Right. Uh, and it's, it, it's, supposed, it's my first time there. So it's supposed to be quite a, a joy. He's but... done a ton of conventions this summer. Yeah. He's just yeah. not. Yeah, it, all, all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> the pandemic has unleashed yeah. this thing. Uh, uh, but the two charities that I, uh, I, I also work with Cameo, which you, you're probably familiar yep. with, they, where you can get uh, celebrities to record little 30 second messages to people. And um, uh, in 2020, we uh, devoted a month of Cameo, the, the proceeds from Cameos to a project called Project Cure, which um, donates medical supplies uh, to people uh, and, and hospitals and communities around the world who otherwise can't get them. And it, it became a particular uh, concern, obviously, during the pandemic. Um, and also there's a, a, a company called Limbitless uh, in Florida, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's the University of Central Florida uh, that makes uh, prosthetics uh, primarily for uh, kids not exclusively but primarily 
and they will make them in in the form of looking like their favorite superhero. Oh, and wow. they happen to do, you know, one, you know, looks like the arm of Master Chief. And it's fully functional. It's a completely functional artificial <laughs> limb. That's cool. Uh, Amazing. And, yeah. and, and, and they donate them. There, there's no cost to the to the recipient, so uh, they're a great organization and and deserving of uh, of your t of your attention and money if you can, and and you know we'll be doing something you know with them again, but but uh, uh, you, you know that that was uh, yeah those are two sort of my little those are great projects. great causes absolutely I, I, yeah I love them both and we'll make sure to uh, <clears throat> you know have, provide a link to your. Twitter down below. Um, I think your cameo link is there um, in your in your Twitter, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere. Um, you guys can find that. It's it's really easy. Yeah. Um, if you're looking to to have Steve do some lines for you, uh, Jen, are you on? Are you on cameo? Nope. Okay. Well, for Jen, you're just gonna have to wait for Jen to voice something in the game. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, uh, again, thank you guys so much.